Hello and welcome to TeacherBird.com. I'm Charlotte and I'm here to teach you a few simple techniques to enhance portraits using Adobe Photoshop. We'll start by evaluating a photo to determine the best steps to make a great portrait. We'll work with color levels, evening out skin tone, and I'll even teach you a simple smile brightening technique. Before we begin, make sure you have Adobe Photoshop installed on your Mac or PC, and we'll start. To begin our tutorial, we'll start by opening Photoshop. Make sure you have a copy of the file on your desktop. That way we'll have easy access to it. Just double click in Photoshop and that'll open up the open dialog. Here's our photo, let's begin. Now that we have the photo open, let's start by analyzing it. This will give us a guideline on what we can do to enhance it. We want to be able to fix up the image, but we don't want to overdo it to make it look unrealistic and fake. Let's take a closer look at the photo by zooming in. On a Mac, we'll use the Command Plus button. On a PC, the Control Plus. As you can see, we have some very dark areas in the photo up here. We'll learn how to use an adjustment layer to fix that and even out the lighting. We can also see some blemishes in her skin on these areas. We don't want to over adjust the skin tones, otherwise she'll look too plastic or fake, but we can get rid of very obvious marks. The last thing we'll do is try a technique to whiten up her smile. A great smile always makes for a better picture. Now that we know what our next steps are, let's begin. The next thing we are going to do is make the general adjustments on the photos. We want to be able to improve the colors in the image and enhance light and shadows. We're going to use adjustment layers to edit the levels in the photo. An adjustment layer is good because you don't actually edit the original photo. You just create a layer and from then on you can go back and adjust it, make it darker, make it lighter without harming the raw photo. Let's click the levels. Now that we've clicked the levels, we can see the waves in the photo. It peaks a little bit at this end of the spectrum because the shadows are too dark. What we can do is grab the mid-range of the photo and see what looks best. As we take it down towards the lighter end of the spectrum, we can see that the image has improved greatly. We don't want to adjust it too much. And it's a matter of preference. If you want to go for a lighter photo, you can bring this down to the left a bit more, or if you want to just keep it in the middle, I think right here is good. The next adjustment I want to make is the brightness and contrast. Again, we'll go to our adjustment layers palette and click on brightness and contrast. It pulls this dialog up. Now these adjustments are very minor, but they can make a lot of difference. If we just brighten up the photo just a bit and keep the contrast to a minimum. You don't want to remove too much contrast because that may make the photo look fake. Okay, now we're done with the general adjustments. Now let's get into skin smoothing. The next thing we're going to do is skin smoothing. Cleaning the skin is usually done with a combination of the clone tool and the healing brush, which is here on the left palette. The main difference between the two is that the healing brush preserves the texture of the skin better. The clone tool keeps the texture exactly, only when used with a hard-edged brush. 
This is not something you want to do when retouching the skin. You want to keep the edges soft. The healing brush doesn't always work, but the best thing to do is use a combination of the healing brush and the clone tool. When retouching the skin, you want to keep as much of the texture as possible. We'll zoom in and you can see that there, there are slight pores and color variations in the skin. And we want to keep that as natural looking as possible. If you use anything like the blur tool too much, it'll give us a plastic artificial look, which is something we don't want. Also, shadows under the eyes, you don't want to overdo it too much because then people can start to tell that you've edited your photos. It's best to keep your retouching in a separate layer. That way you can adjust opacity and find the most natural look. Let's create a new layer for our skin tone adjustments. Click on the Layers palette, and then you'll pull up the dialog that says New Layer. You can also use the shortcut which is Command-Shift-N on a Mac, or Control-Shift-N. We have our new layer, and let's put it on top of the background. As we zoom in using Command-Plus, or Control-Plus on a PC, we can see these blemishes here. Now let's take the healing brush and what we'll do is set this here to current and below. That way it'll pull from the background layer. Now that we have our size set, and I think this should do it here, we can just click on the little blemishes we have here. The way to set the healing brush is to Option or Alt on a PC, click, and that'll take the correct spot that you want to clone. Now let's go over on this side. On her chin, we have a few more spots to clean up. Here, there's variations in skin tone. So what we'll do is take the clone tool. And again, we'll hit Option or Alt-click to see what part of the skin we want to clone on top of the blemish. And then we have a few unevenness here. Okay. As we zoom out, we can see more even skin tone, less blemishes on her face. Now let's see what we can do about teeth whitening in this photo. The last thing we're going to do to this photo is whiten her teeth. Now what we'll have to do is select the teeth, bring it to a different layer, and then make our adjustments to it there. So in order to do that, let's click on the lasso tool and we'll select just the teeth area. After we zoom in using Command Plus or Control Plus on the PC, we can just go around the teeth just the teeth area, and that way it separates what we need to adjust. It doesn't need to be exact because we can go in and adjust it afterwards. After it's selected with the lasso tool, we want to hit Command J or Control J on a PC, and that'll bring this to a new layer. So what we have here is just the teeth on its own layer. For now, let's take a minute and just clean this section up so that we, all we have is just the teeth and not any parts of the lips or gums.
Okay, now that we have the teeth in their own layer, uh, we can see that here. We can click. You won't see, be able to see the difference, but you know if you hit Command or Control and click the layer, you'll see you'll see the highlight just on the teeth. Now let's deselect that. With the teeth layer selected, what we want to do is adjust the curves. If you go to Image Adjustment and go to Curves, it'll bring up this dialog. The shortcut is also Command-M on a Mac or Control-M on a PC. Now this is a matter of preference, but what we want to do is take the, the curve and just bring it up slightly in the middle. Be careful not to do it too much because then the teeth get too white. Then we'll be able to know that it was adjusted too much. And I think that there should be just about right. We'll hit OK. We can do one more adjustment level just because it's a little bit too bright, but we don't want to change the colors. So we'll go back again to Image, Adjustments, and this time we'll edit the levels. The levels control the overall lighting of a photo, so this will create a more balanced look with their teeth. Again, it's a level of preference, so just take what you see and just play around with these little, these little adjustment handles. Okay, there we have it. She's got whiter teeth and a better smile. Okay, now that we've made all the adjustments to our photo, let's take a look at a before and after. This was our original photo, as an, and as you can see, we had a lot of dark spots and very light spots. She had uneven skin tone and her teeth were a little dark. After our adjustments, we can see here in the after photo, the color is a lot better for her skin tone. We removed a lot of her blemishes and her teeth are very nice. One good thing to remember when editing portraits is you want to keep it to a minimum. That way we don't over edit and make the photo look too fixed up or plastic. As you can see in what we did in this project, we were able to just take a normal picture and turn it into a very pretty one. What I suggest is practice taking portraits of friends or family and use these four steps to turn them into very nice portraits. Don't forget to analyze the photo, make some general adjustments to the colors. You can smooth out the skin, but be careful not to overdo it. And then go in and whiten the teeth just a bit, just to make smiles better. Okay, now that we have our edited photo and we're all done with it, don't forget to save it. Just go up top, go to File, Save As, and go ahead and save it on your desktop. We can call it Portrait. And now we're done.